guys, this is Elsa and welcome to the Chromatopsia and the song that is my life. Um, sorry today I didn't, I couldn't do my video in my usual little background. Um, the den was occupied so I had to do this in my kids room. Um, so if you see random cats around going in the screen, that's why they're around. Um, but anyway, today I wanted to make my video, um, about, hey mom about what it's like for us explaining um, a chromatopsia to people because I know I cannot be the only one that goes through some crazy just bizarre situations um, explaining sorry uh, my eye condition or some of the questions um, that I get by like grown adults um, by explaining you know my eye condition and what that entails like the specifics of it like the color blindness the light sensitivity the nearsightedness um the nystagmus like just things that i'm i need you know in life to make it easier for me people are just like really or some people don't believe me um just the i am so sorry guys stop akasha um just the random things that people say or ask um but what I really wanted to tell, so sorry, uh, what I really wanted to tell you guys, um, story time, was um, if you are not, so sorry, if you are not aware of this already, um, if you obviously are born with a chromatopsia, you do qualify for social security. Now, I know with every state, um, and I'm not sure if it's every city, you they have like different requirements. Um, but if this is a condition that you're born with, um, you do, you know, qualify. So, um, my parents didn't, uh, what's the word? Not sign up, but like try to get social security for me until I was about, I don't remember if I was 10 or 11. Um, but that's when I started receiving social security and I've been receiving social security ever since. Um, but I really cannot remember, <laughs> excuse me, um, if it's anywhere between eight years or 10 years, or maybe it's a little more, I really can't remember. Um, but every so often, Social Security, um, sends you paperwork, um, that's for an eye doctor, so like an ophthalmologist, um, that they need the doctor to fill out because they wanna make sure you still qualify for social security. So in other words, they wanna make sure you're still blind. Um, so anyway, um, some, I mean, in my experience, every time they've sent me that paperwork, I have to go to a doctor that they choose, like an ophthalmologist that they require me to go to. Um, so the last time I had one of these things, it was a really long time ago. Um, my son was a baby at the time, so uh, it was probably like 14 years ago. Um, I got paperwork from Social Security office letting me know that I needed to go see this ophthalmologist. Um, so I went to go see this doctor, and I, what, I was like 19 at the time, and I haven't been to an eye doctor in years, probably since like middle school or so. Um, I just didn't really keep up with that. But anyway, um, when I went, uh, I filled out the paperwork, and then when the doctor finally saw me, he just had this whole little attitude about him. And now I understand um, that they see a lot of people, they have busy days. Um, I mean, his job is to, you know, I guess probably catch people in lies or... I don't know. Point is, this guy was just rude as soon as, you know, he stepped in the door and just had some kind of vibe about him. But anyway, um, so he asked me, okay, so I see here that you, um, you say, this is a little word to use, you say you have a chromatopsia. So my question to you is, what makes you think um, that you have this? And I just look at him like, really? Did he just, did he just ask me that? Um, so I took a deep breath and I just already knew like, oh, I know how this appointment's gonna go. Um, but I told him, well, I don't think I have this eye condition. I know 
Um, I let him know that uh, this condition runs in my family. I have two brothers and a sister who have this. And then, you know, I was born way later on, but I also got this, so it wasn't a shock. Um, obviously, I was diagnosed at a very young age. I was six months, my mom told me, when I was diagnosed. Um, and so that's how I know. So like, he's just looking at me like this, like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like if every word that's coming out of my mouth is a lie. And then, um, what else did he ask me? This was a long time ago, but it made such an impression on me that I had to, had to share this story. Um, so then he's like, okay, so how, what are you able to see? What are you not able to see? Like, what are the things that you struggle with? So that was like a genuine question, right? So then I'm letting him know, you know, my eye condition, like my things that I struggle with. Um, the fact that I'm super, super nearsighted. Um, the fact that I'm really like extremely sensitive to the light. Um, the light, you know, bothers me a lot, especially if I'm out in the sun for a long period of time. Like I get headaches, um, especially like with school, with really small print and everything, you strain um, your eyes so much that it literally gives you a migraine and then you get like really bad neck pain hence you get back pain like upper back pain and it's just um it's a lot and then you know your other things like you're colorblind and then once I said that he's just looking at me like uh-huh uh-huh okay um so then he had me explain uh what do I think a chromatopsia is um and like I said, this was a long time ago. So, I mean, I kind of said more or less like what I know. Like technically, um, you know, people have cones and rods like in the back of your eyes. And those two things work together in order to um, like help your eyes, you know, see things like, accurately and um, filter out the light, like all the light that goes into your eyes. And um, they also help you see color. Um, what well, there's a lot of people that have a chromatopsia that either are born without the cones altogether, or some people have them, they just don't function. Um, so without the cones, whether they're there or not, but don't fun don't work, you know, you can't do those things. So that's why we see the way we see. So when I told him that, he started laughing and he told me, <laughs> that's impossible. Those were his words. So. Um, like I said, at this time, I'm 19. I've been to ophthalmologists all my life. Like, I know what I'm talking about. So I was like, okay. Um, but anyway, so then after this, he, um, they do the whole drop thing. And um, for them to dilate your eyes, it takes like a long time. It's like, I don't remember if it's like three to four different sets of eye drops that they have to put in. And then in between each set of drops, you have to wait like 10 to 15 minutes um, before you can do the other one so it's just a long period of waiting around um and the drops really burn well at least they do for me and they're very uncomfortable um but anyway after that they did um two big machines uh, one of them it's just like to look in your eye and see um you know how your eye looks and then take pictures of it and then there's this other one um i think it's like to take the pressure or something of your eye and it's like a little machine that just you hear like a little poof like of air and it does that. Um, but anyway, after the whole thing, he didn't say a word to me. He didn't say, oh, you know, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. He just, he took a long time um, looking at my eyes. So I know he was, I don't want to use the word impressed, but I guess, I don't know. He was really, I guess, thorough would be the word. Um, he was looking at my eyes for a really long time. Um, but after that, he was just really quiet and really serious. And then he told me, okay, well, um, I already finished with my assessment. Um, I'll fill out these paperwork and send them in right away. And that was that. He just walked out the door. So, um, yeah, that's how that went. But, um, I also wanted to talk about, you know, how it is, uh, for us explaining it to people what a chromatopsia is, or not just even that, just the way we see. I feel like, People have a very hard time either believing you or um, just the type of questions they ask. Like, um, for example, um, they'll ask me, what color is this? Um, you know, in her case, I know what color she is, but let's just say I've never met her and I didn't know. 
I'll be like, I don't know. Oh, okay, I know, I know, but what color do you see this? And I'll be like, I, I don't know. No, no, I know, I know you don't know, but what color do you see it? And I get asked that question so many times. It's like, I don't understand what people's thinking is. Like, they'll tell me, um, I don't know if this is true, but they'll tell me like, oh, this is yellow. I'm like, okay, okay, but what color do you see this? I don't know. No, I, I know, but I'm telling you this is yellow. But what color do you see this? As if colorblind people have like some whole other just random color that they, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying these questions are just crazy. Um, what else? Uh, the one I also get is, really? Well, you don't look blind. As if blind people are supposed to look a certain way. Um, so that, that one really bothers me. Um, let's see, another one. I go to doctor's appointments pretty frequently. Um, so you know when you go into a doctor's office, you have to sign in. So, um, I'll have somebody to give me an example, but like, you know, a little pad, like the little notepad, uh, where it has the little things where you fill out, like your name, the date, what time you got there. Um, I have to look like this close in order to see, you know, the little small writing. Um, and when I fill it out, I'm like this. So whenever I'm doing that, there's always like, um, what are they called? The receptionist or somebody just person that works there that tells me, oh honey, did you forget your glasses? Oh, and it's like, no, no, I just, you know, I can't see very well. Oh, then you should really get some glasses. It looks like you need them. Or, or, um, Let's say this is a cell phone. I know it's not a cell phone, but let's just say this is a cell phone. When I look at my cell phone, I have to literally be like this. And I'm really close to my phone because i that's how close I need to be. Um, I always have people to ask me, oh, you, you, do you need glasses? You should really get some glasses. I hear like random people just around me, people I don't know, just tell me that because they see me out in public with my phone so close to my face. It's kind of like mind your business Jesus people are so opinionated um also like I said um when I'm out in the store usually there's always somebody with me like my son my husband usually someone's always with me I don't really go that many places by myself um but on the rare occasion that I do and I have to shop for something that involves color um, I, when I shop for clothes, my husband does not have patience for that. So I will go by myself. He'll drop me off. Um, I'll go look for whatever I want. And if I'm being picky and I want to know the color of something, obviously I need to ask someone around me. Either I'll ask someone that works there or just like a passerby. Excuse me, can you let me know what color this is? And they all give me that same blank stare like, like how do I not know what color this is? Um, so instead of asking, excuse me, what color this is, I'll automatically just say, excuse me, um, I'm actually colorblind and I would like to know what color this is. Can you please help me with this? And that way I feel like, I mean, you still kind of get the look, but not as much or as harsh. Um, sometimes people are a little bit more understanding and that way they'll be more willing to help you. Um, but they still kind of give you that look and then... Uh, some people go as far as really asking you questions. So if if you can't see color, how do you do this? Or how do you do that? Or how do you match your clothes? Or just, I don't even want to say some of the questions I get, but people are just too much sometimes. Um, when I'm explaining it to my family, uh, especially like my extended family, they don't understand my vision. Or like I said, they forget that I have something going on. Um, or sometimes people make too much of a deal of it. Like, um, I'm sure most of you guys know I drive a mobility scooter. That's how I get around. Um, the reason why I acquired this scooter is because I had to take my son to school all the time. And I feel like all my family knew that I was always riding a bike. I was always taking my son to school on a bike. And nobody had anything to say or like opinions or offered, you know, to take me, nothing like that. But once they heard that I got a scooter, now all of a sudden people are worried because of my vision. And they would, um, you know, of course they wouldn't tell me, they would tell my mom, 
like how how is she able to do that though don't you think that's dangerous oh do you really trust her out on the streets with that um oh my god i saw her uh she, i saw that she put a picture uh with her with the scooter don't you think she should be wearing a helmet oh i don't understand how that thing doesn't have seat belts it's a mobility scooter it is a electric wheelchair that just so happens to have two seats it's not a fast vehicle it is an electric wheelchair for the sidewalk you don't need a helmet you don't need seat belts it's an electric wheelchair anyway um i feel like just people are just they either overthink it or don't think it enough um and it's kind of hard for people for you to explain your vision to people whether it's teachers or people around you because i kind of feel like they don't like they don't believe you sometimes because you are so normal um and it's because to us it's not a big deal because it is our normal it's our um it's our everyday life it's how we've always seen it's how we're always gonna see so to us it's not a big deal but to other people to know that you see differently than them it's like um they have a hard time believing it i guess um but anyway so i wanted to make this video basically um for parents of children that have a chromatopsia for you guys you know to have like an open dialogue and talk about stuff like this because i mean i know they must um, especially for the younger kids like man i just i wish you guys so much luck because this is hard out there whether you're a child explain it to your friends um when you're in high school or like when you're older when you're you know explain it to your college teachers or you know you're when you finally join the workplace explaining it to your bosses to your co-workers it's like I feel like it's always a big thing um, knowing what to say and how to say it and seeing how people uh, like receive that and whether they're considerate of that or not. Um, I know there's a lot of people that just don't say anything. They rather not have people know. And you know what? That's honestly okay too. Like you don't always have to be putting your business out there. And I do feel like your eye condition is something personal. So whether you choose to share it with people or not, that's totally up to you. Um, but I'm just saying, uh, in my case, when you do share it with people, the, some of the crazy reactions I get. Um, but I am curious to hear any other stories out there of silly or funny things that have happened to you, um, when you, you know, let people know about your eye condition. So if you wouldn't mind commenting them, I appreciate it. I feel like we all like to hear, you know, from other people's stories. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I'm sorry my cats kept making their little appearances, but anyway, um, anyways, I hope you guys have a good night. Bye.